say patrols, all motorists are either members or possible members. But to most members, the patrol service is the AA. For every member we help, hundreds seldom ask for our assistance. But these people will continue their support only if they know they subscribe to a good show and that the service is there when they want it. How can they know that the AA is a good show? almost entirely by the impression of the association they get from the road service. The patrols they see on the roads daily, you. So you see how vitally important it is that you should always be smart, alert and attentive to create this right impression. It is equally important, of course, that you do nothing that would give the motorist the wrong impression. Not only must we be efficient, but we must also always appear efficient. Here's an example. But where's the patrol? Oh, there, more interested in cricket than his job. I wonder what the passing members think. Patrols generally have an unrivaled conception of service, and when a member is in difficulties, will go to no end of trouble to help. But breakdowns are few today, and the member must, and does, judge you by your appearance, behavior, and smartness. Be sure then that everything you do maintains the reputation for keenness, enthusiasm and anxiety to serve which has been built up over the years. Remember also that the smart salute with a smile is the outward visible sign of your desire to give courteous and efficient service and that when your RSO is spick and span and you yourself are alert and well turned out, you're an active and continuous reminder to members and to non-members of the service you are there to provide. But on the other hand, this apparently deserted RSO can be innocently explained the morning break. But why, why has he parked it outside a pub? Do you see what I mean? And look at this. Make no mistake about it, these incidents may seem trivial, but added up, they mean the difference between an inefficient and a first-class patrol force. It has taken over 40 years to build up the esteem in which you are held by the motoring public, and it is up to you now to uphold it. The patrol is a popular figure with all road users, and particularly with AA members, and you must see it remains so. It is not only what you do, but also how you do it. Now, the first thing noticeable in a good patrol is that his uniform is well-fitting, clean and of neat appearance. He keeps clean by wearing overalls for dirty jobs and by doing so gives an added impression of efficiency. Similarly, he realizes that oil skins are provided not for smartness but to keep him dry in wet weather. How much smarter he looks when the weather's fine without them, don't you agree? The telephone box on your beat is another reflection. It should not only be clean, but be made as attractive and fitting to its location as possible. Equally important in conveying a good impression is the RSO. They usually look pretty good outside, but when one looks inside, one should find the oilskins neatly packed in the proper compartment. Properly wrapped, they fit in easily and remain clean. Overalls should be kept wrapped up to keep them from getting dirtied by oily tools. The tools themselves should be a good working kit that will do a real job when required. And then it is possible by fitting a piece of three-ply into the lid of the box to keep papers and maps in good condition. How much more confidence you'll give the member when he sees your box like this. But the salute is the most obvious form of smartness noticed by members and other motorists. The correct right hand salute, right up to the peak of the hat, complete with a good smile. Not only when standing on the roadside, but when traveling along the road on the RSO. This conveys an impression of alert smartness, which is continued also when attending to a member, so that the feeling of alertness to possible needs of other passing members is maintained. 
Always ask every stopped motorist whether you can be of service to him. Whether he wants you or not, he will be pleased with your courtesy, and if he's a non-member, you may get him to join. Never, however, overlook the elementary road precautions for safety, and make certain the road is clear before turning. By proceeding carefully and parking considerately, the patrol shows that he is giving willing, common sense and quick service. Good afternoon, madam. Can I help you? Good afternoon, patrol. Am I on the main Plymouth Road? Oh, no, madam. You're on A31 for Bournemouth. Oh. Well, actually, I wanted to get to Yeovil. I thought perhaps the Plymouth Road was the one. If you're going to Yeovil, you want A30. Just a moment, madam. You see, his approach is courteous and charming. He runs quickly back to his RSO, gets a good map and a route pad, and wastes no time in getting back to the member. This is where we are, madam. You continue down this road for four miles until you come to Farnham, and then turn right onto A287. Continue down there until you meet A30, just outside of Basingstoke. Just a moment, madam, I'll write it down for you. Thank you very much. He takes pains to make clear the member's route, is knowledgeable on districts beyond his own, and he writes down the details of the route, printing clearly the names of towns and the road numbers. Well, that's all very simple, but he's done just that little more than he was asked. Easy enough, don't you think? But do you do it? Here's another patrol. Just another sample from the same stock. Well, perhaps not naturally so smart looking, you say? Look closer. A good uniform is spoiled by that button and that ugly bit of pullover. No doubt this patrol is very pleased with this effect. Do you think it looks smart? And this patrol is quite unconscious of the way his comfortable cardigan spoils his appearance. None of these faults can be found with this patrol, but look at his uniform. Perhaps he does repair jobs without using his overalls. No. You see what's wrong? His overalls are placed inside out with his greasy tools on top. Every time he puts on his overalls, he gets more greasy dirt on his tunic. And, of course, the same fault with his oilskins, from the same cause, not even placed in the proper compartment provided to keep them clean. What a contrast with a properly kept box. This telephone box is certainly functional, but that's about all. The broken pencil, that, of course, might have just been done. But there is other evidence of neglect on the shelves. And in the telephone mouthpiece, about which most people are fussy. What an advertisement. And then the salute, or sometimes the lack of one. A patrol may say to himself, he's there if his services are needed, but how slack and unattractive the service is made to look. The salute, more than anything else, reveals the smartness or slackness in the individual patrol. This patrol thinks he has saluted, but he wasn't seen. This can be seen almost any day on any main road. No doubt the patrol has good reasons to search his RSO, but it would look quite different if he were facing the road so that he could keep an eye on the traffic and salute when necessary. Our road service is pretty widespread, but even so a member can travel many miles without seeing a patrol and then to get this. And now look at this. This Heil has been out of date since 1934. How bad it looks to the passing member. And now this from the opposite camp. Shocking. It not only lets down the AA, but where is the man's pride in himself? Look at this for sheer slovenliness. How bad it looks. Do you do this? And now on the RSO. Once again using the wrong hand for the salute and only one finger. You remember this one, just as slack and uninterested as the others. The wrong hand again. He nearly missed the handlebar, he's so dopey. And look at his expression. Well, well, look at this depressing sight. Humped down on his RSO, a gloomy, depressing face, hardly any salute at all. Can this be you? This is as bad. This patrol, dreaming by the roadside, would, if questioned, complain that there is too little to do. 
Then why on earth doesn't he salute? This complaint of too little to do is one which this patrol would probably endorse, but at least he does salute, and correctly at that. But a member's car has pulled up close to him. Why doesn't he walk along and ask if there's anything he can do for him? Even now, the penny hasn't dropped. A practically deserted road, a stopped car and car horn sounding. You! At last. Look at that slack and slovenly walk. He hasn't been to the patrol school, I'm sure. No salute and listen to this. Hello, old man. Anything wrong? Yes, there is. Is there a garage fairly close? I seem to be running on an empty tank. Garage? Yes, about four miles down the road. I'll follow you down to make sure you get there safely. <laughs> Don't forget, no money, no petrol. All right, all right. You'll follow me then. OK, old man. This patrol is anxious to please and is willing to go out of his way to help, but he spoils it all by his dreadful approach, misplaced humour and generally slack attitude. No doubt this patrol is enjoying his pleasant little gossip with a passing acquaintance. Much more enjoyable than attending to his job. Come on, hurry up. No, he must have his last little chat. Of course, no salute. Hello there, what's your trouble? Lost your way? Afternoon. I'm trying to find Coldray, but it doesn't seem to be signposted anywhere. Shouldn't be very far away. Coldray? Coldray? Never heard of it. Oh, there! Ah, that's not in my district. Ask further on. You'll find another patrol down the road. Ask him. Sweaty hands messing up the car coachwork. Negligent approach to a member. Failure to give any assistance, all leaving a thoroughly dissatisfied member. Now, here's an opportunity to do a job for a member. Near front wheel, puncture. Easy. Isn't the jack there? It should be. Never mind, madam. I'll use mine. This would have to happen today. This is what the member feels she pays for. Quick service. Shan't be long, madam. Ah, here we are. No. Good heavens. Lost this last week. Just a moment, madam. Always the last thing to come to hand. But as you see, it takes a lot of time to get through the disorderly odds and ends to... Ah, here we are at last. The jack complete. Not very efficient by the look of them, but our patrol is certainly quick on the job. One wheel off. Now on with the spare. Well, well, well. But after seeing the inside of that box, we are not really surprised. The slack condition of the RSO was reflected in the bad upkeep of the toolkit. It let down the road service, the patrol and the member, to say nothing of the car. Now see what's happened. <laughs> Oh, my poor darling. And again. <laughs> ah, but this looks better. Fortunately, every patrol is equipped to deal with this sort of problem, and he's absolutely heaven sent when he arrives on the scene. Speed is the essence of the problem when dealing with a fire. There's nothing like a good fire extinguisher to put out a petrol fire. For putting out a petrol fire, there's nothing like a good fire extinguisher. <clears throat> There's nothing like a good fire extinguisher for put... Oh, come on, for goodness sake, let's get the record out of this groove. Nothing like a good fire extinguisher, if only it had been regularly checked to see that it's at a good level and pumping properly. Oh, you may laugh, but this has actually happened. These opportunities for direct service may be rare, but that's no reason to neglect ordinary precautions. The patrol might have been badly hurt or even killed. Always take every precaution when turning in the highway. Your RSO is your livelihood, 
and without it you've lost 80% of your efficiency. The daily maintenance check before starting for your beat in the morning is essential. Check petrol and all controls. The clutch lever to have a quarter inch free movement. Test the battery and lamps for serviceability. Test all the tires for correct pressure and don't forget, replace the dust cap. Ensure that the pyrene fits tightly. Check front brake anchor bolt and wheel spindle nut for security. Tighten the rear wheel spindle nut and the three rear wheel studs. This is most important as they tend to work loose. Check foot change pedal pinch bolt and carburetor air funnel for tightness. Start up the engine controlling the return of the kick starter pedal. Ensure that the oil level is correct and that oil is returning to the tank. This patrol, a good man, has made his check and confidently leaves for his beat. It comes to this. Your attitude must always reflect your pride in your job. It's a good job, with many opportunities for advancement and always with the assurance that the association will look after its men and their families through any crisis, as you remember it did in 1914 and again in 1939. It's a smart core, and it's up to you not to let the side down. The AA is judged by you, and this is what the member must always see. Smart, clean boots and gaiters, a well-fitting uniform and breeches, and the look of a man who is proud of his smartness. Whatever the uniform worn, say the overcoat, it should only be worn in the official way without additions. It is equally important that these points be observed when you are riding your RSO. And the salute must be given early, clearly, and with the right hand and a good smile. A good upright position on the RSO and an alert, friendly look. In the winter, or in cold weather, the overcoat should be worn without any unofficial additions, and the salute should be with the right hand, and be given early and clearly and with a cheerful smile. As mentioned before, the correct hand for the salute is the right hand and it should be a clean, clear salute with a cheerful smile. All hand signals should be given clearly and with authority. Take every precaution before turning on the highway. Always park the RSO behind the member's car. Get quickly to the member and give a smart salute and a cheerful smile. Good afternoon. Are you in trouble, sir? Can I help you at all? The engine's just faded out. I can't get anything from it. The battery seems all right, though. One moment, sir. I'll get my kit. I think I'll be able to fix it. You will see that he has kept his hands off the coachwork. His approach was civil, and he realized that he who serves quickly is doubly welcome. He unwraps his overalls from the paper in which he keeps them in the RSO, gets back to the member quickly and gets on with the job. But when he is able, he still gives service to other members, keeping up the high reputation of the road service, which is a crack service, comprising the finest body of uniformed civilians in the world. Good saluting with a cheerful smile, clear distinct signals, an upright carriage on the RSO. Whatever the job you are doing, Behave as the master of it. The motoring public has a high opinion of you. You have inherited a proud tradition. You must uphold it. Do yourselves justice by acting up to it. It's a crack core. You can keep it looking so by keeping up to the mark the only person who concerns you, that is, yourself.